The Lake of the Woods Control Board presents 2022 flooding in the Winnipeg River Basin. This video is the first in a three-part series of videos concerning this historic flooding event. This series covers three topics. The first, in this video, an overview of the flood and general hydrology and hydraulics of the basin. Second, a review of the 2022 flood hydrology water levels, and water level regulation. And third, answers to common questions posed to the board about this historic event. The spring and summer of 2022 brought exceptional flooding conditions across the entire Winnipeg River drainage basin in Ontario, Minnesota, and Manitoba. New records for water levels were set in many areas, while other areas that were short of records were the highest in many decades. This flooding caused widespread damage to public infrastructure, tourist businesses, seasonal and year-round homes, erosion of shorelines, and damage to countless docks and boathouses. The challenge of extremely high water levels was compounded by the long duration of the flooding. Even as August draws to a close, some areas have still not returned to normal summer levels, nearly four months after high water developed. Dam operators contended with extreme flows in many locations higher than ever recorded. These flows far exceeded the ability of dams across the region to control upstream water levels, with the exception of Lac Sewell, where the highest outflow since 1954 was passed to prevent the lake from exceeding dam safety thresholds. High water levels both above and below the dams caused unique challenges for operators across the region. Individuals, communities, governments, and organizations responded to the rising water levels with extraordinary efforts over many weeks to create and build up flood protections. Not all of these efforts were successful. Damages were extensive, with states of emergency declared in Minnesota, Manitoba, and at 20 communities in Ontario. Evacuations occurred in the worst hit areas of the English and Winnipeg rivers, and due to the scale and impacts, disaster funding was made available in areas of Ontario and in Minnesota. In order to better understand the factors that contributed to the 2022 flood, the remainder of this video will introduce key concepts of hydrology and hydraulics in the basin, beginning with hydrology, the science of the Earth's water and its movement. The big picture of hydrology can be represented by the well-known water cycle. Clouds release various forms of precipitation, which reach the Earth's surface. From there, the water will either infiltrate into the ground or travel across the ground as surface runoff until reaching a surface water such as a lake or a river. Water returns to the atmosphere either through direct evaporation or through transpiration by plants. Water vapor in the atmosphere condenses into precipitation, completing the cycle. Each of these stages of the water cycle plays an important role in the supply of water to the Winnipeg River Basin, and this varies with the seasons. For the purposes of understanding spring flooding, winter and spring are of particular interest. Over the course of the winter, precipitation falls mainly as snow, and little of this runs off to water bodies, instead accumulating on the frozen ground. While some snow is lost to the air through sublimation, there is little evaporation from the landscape or from water bodies. Under the snow, the frozen ground limits infiltration of any snow that does melt. However, groundwater continues to feed rivers and lakes throughout the winter. If there is no melt, the flow rate of rivers gradually drops as the groundwater storage is depleted. By April, the picture normally sees a gradual shift. Snow that has accumulated begins to melt and run off as temperatures rise. However, with little evaporation or take up by plants, and with frozen ground preventing infiltration, early spring snowmelt and rainfall will nearly all end up as runoff that makes its way to wetlands, lakes, and rivers. Heavy rainfall prior to ground thaw results in rapidly rising rivers and lake levels as the watershed runs off. Normally, the ground thaws by May, and as the spring progresses, the full water cycle is restored. Rainfall can again infiltrate to the ground, evaporation increases, and as plants green up, their demand for water becomes significant. In addition to the seasonal effects of the climate on the local water cycle, precipitation also varies seasonally in ways that are important for lake level management. 
This chart shows the average monthly precipitation that falls over the Winnipeg River Basin. On average, precipitation is highest between May and September and lowest through the late fall and winter months. Together, the summer and spring normally provide about two-thirds of the annual precipitation totals, while the first three months of the year provide much less. Although a few feet of snow on the ground may seem like a lot of precipitation, when melted down, it generally accounts for a minor proportion of the annual precipitation total. In a normal year, water levels of rivers and lakes in the watershed follow a natural trend. In winter, with limited new supply of water, water levels decline. Lower water levels provide storage room for the highest runoff rates of the year in the spring and the early summer, and levels generally rise to their highest point between June and July. As temperatures rise and evaporation picks up, rainfall drops and water levels start to see a gradual decline in the fall through to the next winter. Large lakes in the watershed are regulated to follow the same general pattern as natural lakes as shown here for Lake of the Woods, where the yellow band is the normal range of lake levels throughout the year. With a general understanding of the hydrology of the basin, the next key topic concerns the hydraulic features that affect water levels on large lakes and rivers, beginning with how water flows through the watershed. The Winnipeg River drainage basin spans a region from the Lake Superior Divide to Lake Winnipeg, this area, around 150,000 square kilometers, is larger than about 60% of the world's countries, including Greece and Portugal. It is also 10% larger than the combined area of Nova Scotia, PEI, and New Brunswick, and about the same size as the state of Illinois. Starting just west of Lake Superior, the water collects from Ontario and Minnesota tributaries to a central flow path that drains first into Namakan Lake and then Rainy Lake. Rainy Lake empties into the headwaters of the Rainy River, which forms the Canada-US boundary as it drains to Lake of the Woods, collecting flows from several tributaries, including the Big and Little Fork Rivers in Minnesota. Lake of the Woods drains northwards into the headwaters of the Winnipeg River at Kenora and continues to flow north up to the Manitoba border. In the northern half of the basin, flow can be directed to Lac Sewell, from Lake St. Joseph via the Root River Diversion. Near Sioux Lookout, the headwaters of the English River flow into Lac Sewell. Lac Sewell empties into the English River at Ear Falls and from there runs west to join the Winnipeg River just before crossing into Manitoba, receiving flows from many tributaries along the way. Once into Manitoba, the Winnipeg River drains through the White Shell region passing through several hydroelectric facilities owned by Manitoba Hydro before reaching Lake Winnipeg. The large lakes in the basin have all existed for thousands of years, well before the first dams were built at the end of the 19th century. They are all in low areas within the post-glacial landscape and all feature small outlets that limit the rate of flow out of the lake. With the exception of Namakan Lake, which empties directly into Rainy Lake, these outlets feed water to the rivers below them. These lakes have very large storage capacities, represented here by the relative size of the pin. Lake of the Woods is the largest, followed by Lac Sewell. Rainy Lake is approximately one quarter the size of Lake of the Woods, and Namakan Lake is one quarter the size of Rainy Lake. The change in lake levels over the course of the year occurs according to the balance of water being added to the lake versus water leaving the lake. The main inputs to the lake are precipitation directly onto the water body and water flowing into the lake from tributaries, while the main outputs are evaporation from the lake and water flowing out of the lake. Whether the lake rises or falls is a simple matter of which is larger, the inflow or the outflow. If inflow is greater than outflow, the lake level rises. whereas if the outflow is greater, the lake level falls. The most important part of water leaving the lake is the outflow through the outlets. For all of the lakes discussed here, except for Lac Lacroix, this means flow through dams. Dams at the major lakes were built for two principal reasons, 
the first to store water for use in periods of low basin flows, and the second to raise the lake levels to generate greater electricity. Dam operators do this, however, by reducing outflow compared to what would naturally be let out. Dams cannot be used to increase the outflow beyond what would flow if the dam was simply not there. Lake of the Woods has two principal outlets, and nearly all water flowing out of Lake of the Woods goes through these. The eastern outlet carries water down a channel to the Kenora Powerhouse. This facility passes water through six turbines to generate electricity. At the western outlet, flow is regulated at the Norman Dam and Powerhouse. Flow through the western channel is normally the greatest by a significant amount. Here, flow can be through the turbines at the Norman Powerhouse in the middle of the river, or through 20 log sluices on either side of the powerhouse. The maximum rate of flow through these outlets occurs when all available turbines are running and all logs have been pulled out of the Norman Dam. The rate of flow, however, is not a constant. It changes with the lake level. The higher the lake level, the more pressure the lake provides to push water through the outlet channel into the dam. The main control on the maximum flow out of the lake is the rough rock bottom of the narrow channel about 150 to 250 meters, 500 to 800 feet upstream of the dam. In fact, the four largest lakes in the southern half of the Winnipeg River Basin all have similar natural outflow restrictions at their outlets. One of these, Lac La Croix, has no dam at all. Once the dams at any of the other three lakes are fully opened, they function just as Lac La Croix, only seeing increased outflows as the lake level rises to push more water through the narrow outlet channels. The maximum flow out of these lakes is always based upon the lake level. This concludes the first of the three-part series covering the 2022 flooding in the Winnipeg River Basin. The key information from this video will help to understand the concepts and discussions in the following videos.